Today we're checking out this behemoth. This is the Kalen C300. Let's check it out. G'day folks, this is Shane. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and also click that little bell. Let's check out this behemoth up close. Here's the pedal up close. Now, as you can see, we've got a whole lot of different effects that we can use. We can also stack the majority of these together as well. First thing to point out is the tuner. It works extremely well and I tested this as well. And the good thing about it is it mutes your signal when you've got it on. We have two different flavors of boost here or overdrive as well. We have an overdrive boost with the toggle switch down and we have a bog standard overdrive with the toggle switch up. Now you can't sort of stack these together, it's one or the other. I think the reasoning behind this might have been if you're already playing a dirty amp, you might only need the clean boost. So if you're playing on a clean amp, you might only need the overdrive. So that works like that. You can of course though, stack the, either of these two into the distortion as well. The distortion's an interesting sort of uh, voicing, we'll get into that in the video. We also have a chorus which sounds really musical, a delay which absolutely rocks, I think this sounds really great also, and a reverb which is a little bit fussy, and we'll get to that also in the video. It gets wet really quickly, so you've got to have the mix and the dwell most of the way down, especially for the sort of stuff that I play. If you're into more ambient stuff, you could probably go crazy, but I find it almost unusable, unusable with them anywhere past about here. So looking at the back of the pedal here as well, as you can see, we've got an effects loop right in the center here. So send and return, turn that on and off by the toggle switch here. If you do want to run extra effects through the effects loop, which is pretty sweet. We have an auxiliary and headphone input here, auxiliary in, so you can stream you know, from your phone if it's got a headphone jack or whatever, straight into the pedal. We have a headphone out, which is great. There's a master volume here, which is the master volume for the effect, whether you're using headphones or whether you're going straight into the amp. We have a regular output here to the amplifier and a balanced XLR out. Now this particular pedal has amp sim tech as well, so you can essentially just run this dry straight into a sound card and get some pretty usable tones. The C300 also comes with a power supply as well as the auxiliary cable, so you do get everything you need to get started as well, which is pretty sweet. A huge thanks to Kalen for sending this out. If you'd like to find out more about it, all the links will be on screen and in the description below. I'll also post an Amazon affiliate link down there which supports the channel, so you can check that out if so choose. Let's get into it. All right, let's get into it. Today I'm playing my bog standard Mexican Stratocaster into the Joyo Jackman amplifier, which is based on a Marshall. There's no reverb or anything on this little amplifier head, so all the reverb that we'll hear is from the pedal, and that's currently off as well. So let's see how it sounds dry to start with. <laughs> Now with some reverb. It's a very wet reverb, even with the signal or the mix most of the way down, you're still hearing quite a bit of it any further up and it gets really wet, but we'll come back to the reverb. I just want to give just a little bit of a sense of how it sounds at a lower volume or the way that I would use it. We'll come back to it in a little bit. So here we go. Let's check out the boost. It has a clean boost, which functions along the bottom here. Let's crank that up a little more. It does have a gain control as well. It's a little bit more bass. So that's just pushing the amp with clean volume and a little bit of green. Very cool, let's try the overdrive. So toggle switch up and we'll be using this top panel. Now these don't stack or anything like that, so it's one or the other.
Volume control down. Feels great. Volume back up. And over to bridge. Now any buzz you're hearing is single coils in a room full of six studio lighting, computers and all that kind of stuff. It's got nothing to do with the pedal. Single coils just buzz a little bit in this particular room. And that's with the drive at about two o'clock. We can back it off and turn up the volume for more of, and I'll just add a little bit of low end in there for more of sort of like a rhythm sound. <laughs> Cool. Over to the little crow called Vino SD. It's loaded with a mini humbucker and a Telecaster bridge pickup. Let's go over to the distortion. I've got the gain at about 11 o'clock, the tone at about 12, volume somewhere about 11 o'clock. It's pretty loud this channel, so here we go. Not my favorite distortion ever that I've heard, but it's, you know, if you're into it. Let's turn the tone control down. Let's see if this helps. It's a really, really compressed distortion. I'm not kind of used to that sort of sound. It feels kind of squishy to play, if that makes sense. Now let's compare that, let's go back to the overdrive here, I'm going to crank the drive up a little more, let's have a listen. To me that just sounds rounder and fuller sounding, no doubt about it. We're not going to stack anything just yet. We'll do that in a minute. So uh, yeah, this is the distortion again. It sounds okay. It just sounds like an amp on 10. And I've got the gain at 12. So let's bring the gain back down. Sounds way better to my ear, at least for what I like. It's all subjective stuff with the gain down, the volume up, and the tone down a little bit as well. So there you go. Let's check out the chorus effect. I think this sounds kind of nice. And you can, of course, add some dirt to that. Yeah, cool. Let's check out the delay tones now, and I've got it set up to how I think sounds pretty good for my particular setup. This is neck pickup. Alright, so that's a pretty wet sort of signal. Let's turn the mix down a little bit. So you can definitely get more of a subtle tone, or if you want to go crazy, you can turn up the mix. Yeah. 
You can also change all the parameters, so how fast the repeat comes back, all that kind of stuff. So if we turn up the time, it's gonna take longer for the repeat to hit. You can also make it slower as well. Turn up the time some more. Alright, cool. Let's turn the mix back down. Turn the time back a bit. You can also get that rockabilly sound if you like as well. I'm not really that into it, but let's try it now with some overdrive, delay, and reverb. Here we go. Yeah, let's just turn the mix up a hair on this and add some more repeats. So we're gonna hear more actual delays coming back at us. Now remember I said we'd come back to the delays, or oh, the actual reverb I should say. Let's turn up the mix a little bit more on both. We'll put them both at nine o'clock, the mix and dwell. And what this will do It'll get kind of crazy, here we go. So the reverb goes crazy really, really quickly, which is why I, heard, I had it turned down. Now, unless you're into certain types of music where you need a whole lot of that ambient sort of reverb, and that's fine. Uh, for guys like me who play pretty much rock and blues kind of stuff, keep all of that down, and it sounds way, way better to my ear at least anyway. So here we go. It's all subjective to what you play, of course, how you want to set it up. All right, let's try this as well. So I'm going to go over to the clean boost, turn the gain down. We're going to try the distortion, delay, and reverb. And then I'm going to crank on the boost. So here we go. This is with the gain down. It's such a bright distortion, man. Let's uh, turn the tone down even more. And now with the boost. My one small criticism with this pedal is how bright the actual distortion is. I got the tone most of the way down. For what I like, let's just crank it all the way off and see what happens, but it's a bit too bright. All right, it needs more than that. Let's try this. It gets bright so fast. All right, that's not too bad. That's a bit better like that. Um, that's with the tone just a hair up from off. Let's bring some more gain back in because sometimes with distortions, if you have the gain too low, you get a different kind of sound. So here we go. I don't know, that's just how this particular pedal sounds. Let me know in the comments whether you like the distortion or not, but for my money, I'd probably be leaving this off and just be using the overdrive and boost. I think it sounds great with the delay and reverb. So if you've got another distortion pedal you want to use with this, you could use it you know, on the side or whatever, no problems. I'm sure that's gonna convey on the video the difference in tone from distortion to overdrive and how full and thick the uh, overdrive sounds in comparison to the distortion, but you know, everybody likes different stuff. There's no right or wrong. So I just want to put that out there. Let's try the XLR output on the pedal now. So I'm going straight into the pedal and then out of the pedal straight into my sound card. So nothing else. Now this does have amp sim as well built in. 
And even with everything off, I'm still gonna get a bit of a clean tone that should be at least usable, but it'll sound a whole lot better once we add some reverb. So this is neck pickup. For those of you who have ever recorded just straight into a mixer or a sound card or whatever, electric guitar usually sounds pretty terrible. That's actually pretty usable already. But like I said, it's gonna sound better once we do this. Let's try a little bit of chorus. Yeah, all right, so that's pretty cool. Little bit of delay. And now, with my favorite little bit of overdrive. It got a whole lot louder. I was just looking to make sure it wasn't clipping, I'm not. So it's a very different sound going direct, but it's still usable. If you were to take this to a gig and you amp died, you could get away just going straight into the PA system. It's definitely not up there with something like the Kemper or whatever, but you know, it's not trying to do that. And lastly, let's have a look at the tuner. One of the cool things about this tuner is watch. It mutes your signal and this actually works. I tuned up both of the guitars with it beforehand. Hopefully it's still in tune. It's a little flat there, but you know, nothing too much. That's all right. Looking good, the G, the B, and the E. So it works, it mutes your signal, all tuners should just do that. <laughs> no one wants to hear someone tuning up on stage. You can definitely get away with that at a gig if your amp failed, the DI out is pretty sweet. Thanks for watching folks, my name's Shane. So what do I think of this? Overall, it's pretty cool. As you can probably tell, I didn't really like the distortion tone a whole lot. In my opinion, it was a little bit too sort of harsh sounding, but let me know if you like that kind of sound. It kind of sounds like a rat distortion or something along those lines, but not quite as nice. Now the reverb itself isn't too bad in terms of its tonality, but I found it just a little bit too prominent as soon as you get it up past about nine o'clock. But that's a subjective thing. Some people want a more ambient sound and that's fine. Um, overall, build quality wise, this is great. It feels good. It comes with the power supply, it comes with the aux in. You can use headphones and in a pinch at a gig, you could definitely use it thanks to the XLR out straight into the PA system if your amp died or you can just use it for straight recording that way as well. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with it build quality wise. It feels good. It weighs a bit, but not too much. The enclosure's good. And yeah, the tone, most of the tones I got out of it, I was pretty happy with, but let me know what you think in the comments below. If you'd like to find out more about this pedal, all links will be on screen and in the description below. See ya.